Before I start today, I'd like to leave a text with everybody. I try to leave it across the country. When I was saved, I knew absolutely nothing about the Bible except some basic teaching that I had picked up by accident when I was about 10 years old in a Nazarene church when the people that I was being raised by that were in witchcraft found out that I had went to this church. They, as they say, blew their stack. And that was that for going and hearing anything about the Word of God. So everything I know about the Bible I've learned in the last five years. I had some very, very good teachers in San Antonio, a man named Jack Taylor, a Southern Baptist pastor. And when I told him, it was like two days after I was saved, uh, the things that I had come out of and was afraid of and so on, he gave me this scripture as kind of my battle cry text, whatever, throughout the walk and the ministry that I would have later. And I've left it with Christians because in a day and age when we see so much happening around us, we lose sight of who's behind what is happening around us. We lose sight that if it is good and positive, it's the Lord, and if it's evil and rebellious, it's the devil. A lot of times we look at our teenage children and we think that they're the devil, and the teenage children look at the parents and think they're the devil. And we lose sight of really who our enemy is in this warfare that we're in. So I'd like to leave this with you. I'm sure many of you know it. And if you don't, I recommend that you mark it in your Bible and learn it by heart. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I didn't bring my Amplified with me today. I was a little rushed as I was late. But uh, the Amplified gives a much clearer description of it. So many times we see political corruption and things going on, and these are a few things that I'm going to discuss today, but we lose sight of who's behind that political corruption. We looked at Nixon's error, we look at some of the things that Jimmy Carter's doing today, and we know they're not Christian deeds, we know that they have nothing to do with the Lord, but we kind of scratch them off to the man. We should scratch them off to the enemy, and the man is not the enemy. I came out of a family that um, was, you know, many of you, how many of you were raised Baptist? We'll start that way. All your life, that's what you were raised from the time you were a little child of Baptist. How many of you were raised in a Christian home? Okay, okay. Now, so in the Pentecostal churches, uh, which I <laughs> try to avoid as much as possible, uh, they have a term called homegrown Pentecostal. I guess homegrown Baptist would be just as fashionable. Well, I was a homegrown witch. From the time that I was five years old, I knew nothing but witchcraft. I would have known it sooner, but they didn't discuss it with me. They take you very, very young. And from the even before they start talking about the so-called positive aspects of witchcraft, they talk about the negative aspects of Christianity. So that I'm a, being a Christian is a miracle, not because I wanted out of witchcraft, but that I would consider Christianity the only way out because they brainwash you from very early childhood that the Christian is the most evil being or creature in the universe. That he wants nothing more than to take the everyday witch out and shoot them, burn them, hang them, whatever he can do. And that they are the most hateful beings that ever existed on the same level as maybe Adolf Hitler. So this is what I was raised up to believe. And uh, my last name is Todd, but that was just changed about... 60 years ago, until then, our name was Collins. And the Collins family, my direct tree, was responsible, according to witchcraft history and a few history books that I can find also, was bringing witchcraft to the United States. So uh, when I was 14, and some of you might consider that a very early age, but it wasn't. It was kind of a late age for this. I was initiated into organized witchcraft. In other words, I was made what Brother Rasmussen is. I was made a pastor a minister. I was ordained. In fact, a few years later when I went to enlist in the service, I didn't have to go because I was draft exempt because I was the ordained minister of a legal recognized church. So, uh, 4D status for a few people who know what that is. I'm sure Brother Addison needs to know. Ordained ministers are exempt. And uh, I enlisted and went through the service until uh, I got into a little shooting incident and uh, uh, Germany, after I'd come back from Vietnam, I'd re-enlisted and went to Germany. And uh, I was getting ready to be court-martialed. 
In fact, I had everything down pat. I was as good as gone. Uh, we had entered a plea of guilty yeah, for a uh, deal of 35 years and then parole, and they wouldn't even consider it. An officer had been killed in the situation, and I was more or less just waiting to be transferred to Leavenworth to serve the time when uh, you know, Witchcraft Church, which I thought was just a little group of people that I belonged to, sent a political member of that church, a state senator, two of them, state senator, a uh, U.S. senator, and a representative over to Germany, and they took hold of the situation, and 24 hours later I was a civilian in the United States with all my time, rank, and an honorable discharge, and my court-martial records didn't exist anymore. And all of a sudden I realized I wasn't in something that just lit candles and incense and said magic words once in a while and stuck pins and dolls. There was a little more to it than just a religion. And uh, I left New Jersey and went home to Columbus, and I asked my real mother, I have two mothers, I have a foster mother and a real mother, I asked my real mother what I was to do, and she said, here's an envelope of $2,000 and a one-way ticket to New York City. You get there on the next plane, and I'll tell them you're coming. She didn't tell me who she was going to tell if it was coming or anything. But I flew to New York City, and I spent six months learning all new witchcraft. Till then, I had been taught what most of the teenagers learn, and I want to tell the teenagers something here real quick. I'm sure most of you probably go to the school here, but if you were in a regular school, you would meet which is running all over the place. We hear this across the country. Almost every high school has it, especially in California. And they tell the young people lies. They tell them it's ESP. They tell them it's psychic power. They tell them it's spirits of the dead. They tell them everything but what it is. And I was supposed to be a high priest leading a church of, uh, that had 13 ministers to it plus a couple hundred people in this congregation. And I believe this. And then all of a sudden for six months, this man, Dr. Buckland, unraveled everything and told me there was a one God where before we believed there was four. There was one, and his name was Lucifer. And he was very quickly to tell me that wasn't Satan. He didn't want me to get any ideas that Christians could be telling me the truth. I should have thought then that if he had lied, they had lied to me for almost uh, 18 years, they were probably lying to me now. And But I went ahead and believed it, and for six months I took lessons in witchcraft that I didn't even know that things could happen that had happened. And then I was transferred to Los Angeles, good old L.A., can't seem to get away from it. And for six months, my foster mother taught me something that your pastor is very familiar with, the political situation of the occult. And all of a sudden, I realized that witchcraft wasn't just spell casting, it had a purpose in mind. And that's when I started getting a little afraid because when I was 10, as I said, I learned a little about the Bible. It just happened to be all revelations that I learned. And all of a sudden, we were discussing a world ruler that would be personally guided by Lucifer that could gain control of the world supernaturally and take control of people's minds. Of course, they didn't say there was a defense against this. The way they spoke, everybody was affected. They didn't say anything about the blood of Jesus. But uh, we sat there, and for six months I learned the political structure and the history of witchcraft. And then I was taken to Colorado, and I was placed through an initiation into the sixth realm. And this initiation consisted of a blood sacrifice. And from then on I was given a territory of 13 states. This didn't happen to be one of them. This belonged to my foster mother. But I was in charge of all the occult, political, and drug activity in 13 states. And this is where I was in 1972 when I met the Lord. Well, I, at first, for many years, said by accident, but I've come to realize there's no such thing as an accident when it comes to Jesus. He had everything perfectly planned out. But it was a combination of a personal witness to a coffee house, a Jack Chick Publications track, and the movie The Cross and the Switchblade. And a lot of things that... Uh, uh, for instance, one Baptist church praying and fasting that I would get saved. They figured if I got saved, maybe the rest of the witches would follow in suit. It didn't exactly happen that way, but uh, it did put a dent in the situation.